they're visitors we didn't invite, and now we can't get rid of them. European wasps, they're called, and they're spreading across Australia at an alarming rate. Alarming because they're threatening two important industries and because they pack a sting that's excruciatingly painful, in some cases fatal. In suburbs that are badly infested, you can't have a barbecue in safety or shop without risk at a cake or fruit store. These little stingers have made themselves so at home, it may already be too late to control them. Twenty years ago, there were no European wasps in mainland Australia. Today, by conservative estimates, there are 50 million in Sydney alone. And people are feeling their presence. It was excruciating. At the time, I had to put my head between my legs. It was, it was I thought I was going to faint. The sting, the initial sting, probably 15 minutes, but it, the main pain lingered on for hours. Compared to a bee sting, it was, um, well, you know, ten times worse. European wasps are very efficient stingers. They cause sharp pain, itchiness, and a lot of swelling. And unlike bees, they can sting again and again and again. I was doing some schoolwork on my books, and I felt this thing in my head. It just started to crawl around. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just a fly or something. So I tried to brush it out. It stung me and it really hurt like a pin was going into my head. Although so he was stung on the course, scalp, it was a couple of days before Jeff Didsbury there. could see through this yeah. eye. Oh, it was a wasp because there's a lot of wasps flying here at school and I saw it flying away. There was a few of them. Uh, and they're all on the food near the garbage bins and stuff at school. They're thriving, they're spreading, spreading further and further year by year. But they're Dr. Also Philip Spradbury, the numbers a CSIRO wasps. scientist and a world authority on wasps. He says the speed with which the European wasp has colonised this continent is incredible. Well, it's very widespread throughout most of Australia, certainly the urban areas in Perth, in Adelaide, throughout the state of Victoria southern and central New South Wales and the coast and also nests have been found in uh, central Queensland and Maryborough. What's the best way that we have at the moment of controlling the wasp population? The best way at the moment is to locate wasp nests and, and destroy them. And is that really the only method that we have? It's the only method available to us at the moment. There's just simply nothing else other than to keep away from them. No, I wouldn't be game to, to come within 100 metres of one of these nests without <laughs> complete protection. And now I'll put my veil on when I get closer to the nest which is just up here on the right. You just can't keep Philip Spradbury away from wasps. He needs them for his research and he needs them alive. Normally he'd pour a really good slosh of ether into the entrance of this nest to anaesthetise its feisty inhabitants. But he wants to show us just how dangerous it would be for a householder to stumble onto a nest like this. Here we go, one nest. Isn't that wonderful? Just look at that. Now, I'm going to get a retreat and get my spray. Through his cotton trousers, Philip yeah. Spradbury gets at least 15 stings. I hope this works. But he's so used to it, he was prepared to be stung again. This time in close-up. How is it that some people, like yourself, can tolerate multiple wasp stings, uh, whereas others will have a very bad reaction to it? I'm probably in the majority. I think most people are not so badly affected by wasp stings. Uh, but if you have a series of, of, of stinging episodes, you can either build up an immunity or you can go the opposite way and, 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 and develop a, a sensitivity which can become exceedingly dangerous. And there are a few cases where people have died as a result of <clears throat> what is called anaphylactic shock. Uh, and that can take just one sting if you're so sensitised. European wasps got to New Zealand at the end of World War II, probably in crates of aircraft parts from Europe. It was just a matter of time before they made it across the Tasman. First, it was Tasmania, and then, once they reached the mainland, they spread in all directions. They've only been on the mainland since about 1977-78, that's 16 or 17 years ago. And in that time, they've occupied something approaching a million square kilometres of southeastern Australia. 
Uh, and the way they've achieved that is in fact being transported as hibernating queens during the winter months. They've hitchhiked? Indeed, yes, yes, hitchhiked on trucks, trains. And are they none too fussy about who they accept a lift from? Not at all, no, they'll, they'll travel on anything that's, that's being moved. And that's how they made their way over the mountains and along the Great Western Highway to Bathurst. Probably in wooden crates, cardboard boxes, really any sort of packaging material where a queen could hibernate over winter. It may have been just one queen that started it all, or there might have been dozens. However many there were, European wasps suddenly had, in Bathurst, a whole city full of backyards to invade. One nest in a year could probably send out 500 queens, so that's a lot of nests for us to have to knock out. Max Collins is a pest exterminator in Bathurst. He reckons he's knocked out at least a thousand wasp nests in just six years. He finds them in gardens, inside walls, under houses, even chewing through ceilings. There was a young girl that had three babies and she'd been away for the weekend and come back and a whole nest had actually fell out on one of the beds. So she was... What would have, what would have happened, if, happened if one of her children had been asleep? Well, I reckon that it had stung her that bad, you know, like I wouldn't like to mean the poor kid because it was a fairly big nest. Today, he's been called to yet another wasp nest in a ceiling. I've got about five layers of clothing on. Um, and I have got stung through that even. The one's already stung me on the neck. It's got in under my veil. Ooh, how did that feel? Just feels like somebody stuck a nail in your side of your neck. Hundreds of Australians are stung by European wasps every summer. Some so badly that they end up in hospital. So far, there have been no recorded deaths in this country, but in the United States, they kill between 40 and 50 people every year. It can be fatal, yes. But the majority of deaths of humans for, as a result of wasp stings are generally as a result of asphyxiation, where a wasp stings the throat or the tongue of, of the person, and because of the swelling, they just choke to death. That's the most common method of dying from wasp stings. My throat started to close up and it felt real tight, and I started to like wheeze, and um, it was really hard to breathe, and I could feel it like starting to, starting to swell up and get really warm there. Clayton Belcher was mowing the lawn when he got three stings on the leg. He's one of the unlucky minority who suffer a life-threatening reaction. The doctor um, gave me adrenaline almost straight away and he said you, you were pretty lucky because uh, when your throat starts to close up it will close all the way up and you can't breathe. What can you do to protect yourself now? Once a month I have to go to the um, doctor or Westmead Hospital and get needles, one in each arm because I'm the only one at Westmead Hospital allergic to European wasp and paper wasp. So I get a maintenance dose each month, once a month for about five years. Have you told your dad you don't want to mow the lawns anymore? I tried to, but he said, no, I'm sorry, it's your job, so I'm stuck with it. You can still see the remnants of the, of the ring of where the wasp nest was. It came out about this far. Philip Mortlock had a close shave too when he took to a European wasp nest what did you notice with a garden hose. And how long did it take you to realise that was a mistake? A few seconds. <laughs> a few moments and I was backing away thinking I better get away from here and that's when a few of them caught up with me. Not a good idea? Terrible. No, I mean that would just rip off the envelope. Presumably it was in a garage or a shed or somewhere and exposed. He would have just ripped off the envelope of the nest and released three, four, five thousand wasps. Angry wasps. Angry wasps protecting their home and seeing a figure moving in, in, the, in the foreground with a hose and would go straight for him. So he was lucky to get away with uh, whatever he got away with. Various attempts have been made to control the spread of the wasps, from experiments in biological control in Victoria to local council campaigns to search out and destroy nests. But for now, it appears the wasps are winning. Could we be doing more than we're currently doing? Well, I think we're doing nothing at the moment. Uh, my, my research is, is, is really a hobby for me. I don't get paid to do it. Uh, and I gather there's no, no other research being done in Australia on European wasp. And the problem is, these wasps have really made themselves at home. 
cat food, dog food, all that sort of stuff, they just love bones. I've seen ham sandwiches thrown, thrown away on the ground and absolutely covered in wasps, just tearing out the ham to take back to their nest and feed their young. They also feed themselves on carbohydrate uh, sugars, so they go for the sweet things such as the soft drinks, um, the desserts, the ice cream, the fruit, particularly if it's damaged and, 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 and the like, and fermenting. They just love fermenting objects. And also they, they go for beer. So so just about everything we enjoy at a barbecue is a is perfect wasp magnet. A potential resource for their livelihood, sure. <laughs> 190, thanks. Bruce Potter says the wasps are more than a mere nuisance. They're starting to affect the takings at this shop in Sydney's Oyster Bay. The customers will come in, they'll, they'll see the wasps, they'll uh, get a little bit frightened. Uh, they're trying to uh, get served or they're standing right back. And uh, quite a few of them have just walked out, they just won't come in. And along the street, Jeff Denford in the fruit shop can't get rid of the wasps either. They bother your customers? Well, they bother them because they're worried for their children, they're worried for themselves when they pick up the grapes and they fly out. And Cake shops and fruit shops may be targets today, but if what's happened overseas is a guide, there's worse to come. In Europe, in, in some of the Greek islands, and Skopelos in particular, the European wasp, again the same species that we have here, has caused a lot of problems with the tourist industry there. In fact, they've had to evacuate people from hotels, and there's grave concern that the beekeeping industry and tourism on Scopolis will, from time to time, be very badly affected by the European wasp. And I can see the situation happening in, in Australia, of course. Where they come from, the bitter cold of Europe's winters kills off their nests. Our problem is, that in the milder climate of Australia, these uninvited migrants are really thriving. In many, many cases, the nests, instead of dying out in the, in the late autumn and early winter, they continue. They, get, they just maintain and, and they're, they're sized during the winter months, but in the spring, there's a nest there with maybe five or six thousand workers and maybe hundreds of queens, and these things just explode in size. So you can get nests weighing half a tonne 450, 480 kilograms, some of these nests weigh. And of course, nests like that are highly dangerous. If anybody was to stumble into a nest like that, uh, I wouldn't rate their chances very highly at all. Have we left it too late? The stable door is wide open uh, and the horse is bolted, I mean, in a big way. I mean, it's spread over such a big area now, there's no way we're going to control it in any, any, any significant way. They're here to stay? They're here to stay.